Hi, I'm Greg Canning, and this is the second in a series of videos examining Australian radical feminists in our universities and their ideology of male hatred. Introducing Betty, I hate men McClellan. Here she is at the Asia Pacific's Women's Conference on Peace and Security in 2009. As a feminist who's been around for a long time, <laughs> Dr. Betty McClellan proudly proclaims that she has been a feminist for a long time. She's also an adjunct professor at the James Cook University of North Queensland, where she works in the Department of Social Work and Community Welfare at the Centre for Women's Studies. And in case you're wondering, no, James Cook University does not have a centre or even a course in men's or male studies. As you know, radical feminist ideology is based on the hatred of men. Men are considered the enemy. Men are the oppressors of women. Radical feminists also advocate for a need to fundamentally restructure society and to destroy the patriarchy, which is considered the instrument of men's collective oppression of women. McClellan established a group of radical feminists called the Coalition for a Feminist Agenda, whose aim it is to create a new and fairer global agenda with women's voices at the centre, a new world order based on feminist principles. And of course, when radical feminists use the word fair, it bears no relationship to the true concepts of gender equity, as is obvious if only women's voices and feminist principles are to be at the centre. Women in our everyday lives live in occupied territory. We are not our space is occupied by men. I'm a descendant of those who colonised Australia's first inhabitant. The colonising nation comes in and takes over. It's not, however, clear at what time in our history men supposedly initially invaded and occupied these women's spaces. Despite the example of the British settlement of Australia that McClellan provides in support of her illogical contention. Warlike and revolutionary concepts partly explain why radical feminists idolise Valerie Solanas and her scum manifesto. McClellan and other radfems gathered together in Perth in September 2011 to conference about their male hatred and radical feminist agenda. The initial advertising for the conference quoted directly from Solanas, including in the conference description, and destroy the male sex. Someone must have had second thoughts about this being seen as the actual hate speech it is, and later advertising simply stated, and destroy male supremacy. Of course, our Betty was a keynote speaker at this conference. Her topic was revolution revisited. And really, her association with an, such an event seems to me to be totally inappropriate for one entrusted to the education of students in the social sciences. It certainly gives one cause to ponder on what biases she is preaching to students at the James Cook University. I used to wonder why the situation in my country, Australia, and across the world never actually changed. Even when we had a woman as deputy prime minister as in Australia at this time, why has nothing changed? McClellan is oblivious to the advances made by and for women over the past century and makes the ludicrous claim that nothing has changed, a claim which I consider is embarrassing for an academic who surely must be aware of the volumes of research documenting women's advances. She then goes on to describe tactics that men apparently collectively use to control women. A couple of the tactics that I see um, uh, being used against women in this in our societies. There's violence and the threat of violence. There's rape and the threat of rape. Um, uh, there's um, and you know that, don't you? Like, like you may never have been raped, but all of us women live with the threat of rape. Yes, Betty, everyone can see ordinary Australian women are living in fear every day about the threat of rape and violence from every man they encounter. We know that feminists love to propagate rape and DV hysteria as one of their tactics of choice 
and to paint all men as potential rapists and violent abusers. Unfortunately, I've been exposed to McClellan's anti-male propaganda by way of her published letters in our local newspaper over the last 20 years, a recurring theme of her letters being male violence, any example of which she uses to demonise men collectively. More recently, she's been prattling on about her concept of fair speech, which in a nutshell appears to mean anything that echoes feminist doctrine is okay and everything else is not. The principle of freedom of speech gives everyone, it says, it gives everyone the right to say and do as they like. But women who speak out about the negative effects of pornography on women, on relationships and on the whole of society, apparently do not have the same freedom of speech rights because our protests are ignored. In Betty's contorted theory, for speech to be free, it must also be listened to and acted upon. And if it is ignored, then it's not free at all. You know, the best known argument for freedom of speech is the one called the argument for truth. This argument maintains that it's better if everyone is encouraged to do as they like and to say what they like. Feminists in the 80s developed another argument and it was called the argument for equality. Here we see a university academic confused about some very basic concepts such as freedom of speech, freedom of expression and freedom of actions. In an embarrassing recent opinion piece, McClellan claims that the public discourse around Julia Gillard's performance as PM equates to domestic violence and hate speech. The mental gymnastics involved in reaching such conclusions are typical of deluded feminist illogic. Another tactic of silencing is the one called misrepresentation. There is a feminist in Australia who is very well known, and I'm not going to say her name. Um, what some people have done is they have created a Twitter, you know Twitter? They created a Twitter user name called Fake Jane Smith. They're making out that this Twitter page is written by her. Here Betty is having trouble differentiating something that is called fake in its title and clearly aimed at parody and mocking of lesbian feminist bigot Sheila Jeffries and a bona fide attempt to impersonate Jeffries. If it says fake in the title, Betty, most people would understand that it is not Sheila Jeffrey's true Twitter account. McClellan is another RadicalHub.com guest blogger, another university professor, not put off by a women-only comments policy that describes men as carnivorous and necrophiliac. In this post, she asks, what is it about men? The argument along typical radical feminist lines is that men are all actual or potential sex offenders and their underlying maleness needs to be addressed. Can you imagine an article asking what is it about Muslims or what is it about Aboriginals painting either group with collective derision? It would be totally unacceptable and so it should be when men are the target group. I have complained to the James Cook University about this article and McClellan's association with the Radical Hub site and the SCUM conference but my complaint was summarily dismissed without so much as a caution to McClellan. You can view the complaint and its response from the links below. Perhaps it is testament to the stranglehold feminist ideology has on our tertiary institutions that the administration is unwilling to enforce its own code of conduct, presumably out of fear of offending this powerful group. Still, we must continue to expose radical feminist bigots to the wider public so that their male-hating agenda becomes well-known and public pressure can start to rightfully reduce their influence. One wonders what hostility faces any male student who should dare to venture into social work at James Cook University. Should there be any such students who see this video and would like to share their experiences of McClellan or indeed any other radical feminists, please feel free to contact me. Thanks again for listening. As we move forward into the future and find ways to build a new world.